What's up guys, it's Shana and today we are going to check out Ryan and Miho in Petaling Jaya. Let's go! Today we are in PJ itself and to be specific we are right next to Jaya 1 A junction away from SS2 and within this road of Jalan University we have a lot of things right you have the pharmacy bureau you have columbia hospital you have university malaya you have university hospital so technically this pathway connects from LDP to federal highway as well as NPE that's pretty cool. This building is situated right next to the main road. Well, this is supposed to be a local road, but the problem with road systems within PJ itself is all the local roads become main roads. And then you can see these three lane roads where there will be a lane going in through the project itself. And it's rather peculiar for drop off, you go this way, for parking, you go down that way. So there will be two checkpoints which is not as effective from a security standpoint but due to the site constraint what to do lah right there's something rare you have a dedicated bicycle pathway which is very cool as you encourage people to cycle around PJ itself and now we are in the visitors car park and what you can see it's pretty bright the car park building and the residential building is actually separated so the architect decided to do this way and put the facility that on top of the car park and the main reason for doing so is for cost efficiency because if you were to lay the residential tower on top of the car park structure there will be this structure in between different sets of structural arrangement and it's called a transfer beam or the transfer slab which costs a lot of money so by having this arrangement since they have the land size right it's just way cheaper to put all the facilities on top of the car park building and then you have that very cool connection between the building and for floorings you have cement screenings and some epoxy just for the outlines and we're gonna go a little technical here this is called a lower ground structure instead of a basement because when you call a particular car park space a basement it comes with a lot more mechanical systems required such as the jet fan such as the exhaust system and etc which costs a lot of money so when you have an open cut like this to the car park itself you have fresh air and natural lights in you save up a lot on the mechanical requirements and that's the main difference between lower ground and basement just some cool facts okay now you also have EV charging facilities here but it's very limited something i don't understand is why are there still a lot of materials around the car park area which is so weird right i thought this was handed over already hmm and now we are actually walking through the stairs from the lower ground car park so we are now in the central park or corridor area in between two different blocks so this is the residential block this is the car park block with the facilities on top and you can see the connection in between them seems to be the architectural expression but what i really like is the landscape features you have the creepers climbing through the cables that's nice you have all this as a physical barrier between visitors and the residents for ground floor units but you still have the visual access which then needs to be treated and you can see all windows are actually tinted so we are now on the bridge from the residential tower over to the facilities deck and it's pretty cool i must say and throughout the lobbies you also have very turkish architectural languages i think that's a different language on the other block and you can see the overall color scheme the yellow and white is pretty consistent throughout the entire building we now are in the bio pond area and you can see several languages here but it's very cool you get to actually feed koi very nice and i like the little little red brick and sand brick this is not expensive to do at all but it's a design effort that counts so walking through the bio pond then you have the bamboo trees you have the stone walkways then we are now in this japanese hot bath area where you can see organic shaped pools around 
for you to just dip yourself into. Pretty cool and the sense of arrival is real when you have the pebble stones around and especially pick the right landscape treatments and features to make you believe that you are in Japan. Plus that when you are dipping around, they also consider the depth of it. So when you're dipping, no one can actually see you. That's very thoughtful. Then next to the hot bath area, you have this little pavilion where you have the bamboo features, you have the bamboo trees again with the Japanese light features and the central deck for you to serve tea or whatsoever I think that's cool then now we are in this enclosed space where they have the washroom male and female and it's very themed everything is Turkish architectural themed and the mood is very very nice like everything is in beige color and white very calm and they have this feature Turkish hem off or like I don't even know how to pronounce it. Going in. Wow. So I guess this is where you are supposed to sign it, right? With the natural daylight that comes in through the space itself. It's hot. You have the light elements and you have the tiles along with the fan blocks that is themed. You have the very low ceiling height. The air is actually compressed and you have the heat sharing all around. And this becomes the centerpiece of the space altogether. Very, very nice. And I still remember back then when this name Ryan and Miho was announced on billboards, right? A lot of people thought it was a proposal from a guy to a girl. <laughs> Who would ever thought it's a concept of having two different architectural languages collide in one same building. And the concept is greatly felt within this facilities deck itself. So right after the wellness complex just now where it's very Turkish focused, you have the maze garden on the right and the reflexology area on the left. This will be the gym next to the swimming pool itself. So this lab pool looks amazing. And from the drone shots, you can see everything is green within this facilities deck. Because every empty space they actually put in turfing is not as expensive when it comes to maintenance. And this is when you can see different types of trees really does bring different languages, different feel to the space. Like this is very tropical, right? And you have the herbs gardens as well. like what they did differently here they use transparent corrugated roofings instead of the normal roofings so it's very very farm feel and what's great as well is that throughout the entire walk around the facilities that you won't notice that they're actually located within an industrial area so you can see right behind right all those are either warehouses, factories, production houses and etc. Office complexes which is a very different vibe altogether compared to whatever that is within this area. There's all landed houses, residential focus. Absolutely in contrast. Well that explains why this building is still in commercial title. Next to the herb garden then you will have the children's play area. And this I must say is very extensive. Wow! This is so cool. And back then, before being a parent, I do not understand at all what's the purpose of just having a space, an empty one, right? Very, very important. Just having a ball for the boy to actually kick around, that's good enough and it's actually fun for them. In this stage of life, I really appreciate a setting like this that it's safe for them to just run around and there's a lot of sitting areas for parents just to look after. And there's around a thousand units for this project. So when you come to think of it, the amount of people that will actually use the facilities on a normal Saturday or Sunday evening, there's going to be a lot of people. So they will have these private corners around the facilities that then it's also pretty common to have the jogging path around the perimeter of the entire facilities so that you get the longest distance that you can actually jog around and next to that you have the futsal court also something to highlight would be the neighboring project that's right next to the building right so this will be the direct competition and something to point out as well you can see the ramp from the edge coming up over to this direction right then there will be sufficient height to create such a pocket of space and there will be another ramp down so it adds excitement to the jogging path also it creates a safe sunken space for the football field as well as the open area for kids so this interplay of level is very very well done just that they need to make sure areas that is elevated like this needs to be safe right 
So when I fall down into the space because I couldn't see where I stepped, that could actually be a problem. La. Then right behind the futsal court, you can really feel the density as if this is like another dimension, right? The intensity of the landscape is real. Look at the coverage. Wow, it's so dense. It really adds up to the mood, right? This is going to be a very pleasant walk every time you come back home from work. And for the pool area, you can see there's different levels and there are steps into the lab area. So the lab area is still nicely confined and this is a very good way to create the illusion of width. And you have sittings and landscape area next to the swimming pool also and barbecue area. And just to enhance the experience a little bit, you put in this crusher run to announce the arrival. And just imagine when you are preparing food for a barbecue, this will be the view and your family members jumping into the pool and whatsoever. What an experience though. Then right in the center, there's this box substructure. It will be the badminton court. Well, they call it the multi-purpose hall. There'll be two badminton courts. Very nice in terms of the height. It's air conditioned as well if you need it. Very cool. And this is right next to the transparent structure right outside. So this will be the private dining area where you can host your family, get a chef in. It'll be a very cool birthday event or some achievement celebration event. And I like, like in this space itself, you can see two distinct languages. One, the very solid, crude, raw architectural language. This side, you have the modern glass, transparent steel structure that's lightweight. And both of them sandwiching the plant area. And they also design a walkway around both the solid and the transparent structure and again the similar language of having things in all exposed areas and they created this space because they were needed for maintenance anyway then the architect then made it into like a passageway for people to have a different experience of the whole facilities area right where you can see in contrast of different architectural languages coming together and the glue to both different languages will be the landscape elements and they blend it really really nicely but coming back to reality there will be an issue of privacy for units around the same level of the facilities right because i can always just look into it but they did this they used landscape hedges as a barrier to visual access that's great as mentioned it's an absolute different dimension altogether it's as if we are in a different world from the residence tower so entering the project there's two blocks one is ryan one is miho but that's how they label it and it actually have different feel to the main entrance itself also the lobby something to point out will be the adjacent jalan university that is always and forever will be busy so for the front block, the traffic noise will be very, very apparent. The hedges away from the roads is also very, very well done. Also, the road pavements, I really like. Right? They could have just stick with one type of finishes, but they actually gave different ones just to break the scale. Also, you will have the roof that is transparent. And because of the depth, it looks solid. And it's in contrast to the language that is used within the lobby itself. Wow! So coming out from the lobby via the lift, this is the lift lobby and every floor has a different painting for this empty space. Well, at least there's some treatments to it. You will have this window panel here just to light up the whole space. On this side, there will be four lifts in total serving 18 units all together divided into a left and a right wing and both of them are connected via this double loaded corridor and you will have some voids in between for the toilets and rooms. And the corridor here is 2.4 meters and the height is 2.7. And in this safe and closed space will be the refuse room and this will be catering for 18 units and there's a double door design. So now we're actually come out from here and this will be the refuse room itself. Full high water house, ventilation, water point. And I like that that's a ramp Right, so it's way easier for cleaners to pull out the cart. 
That's very, very thoughtful. Then coming out from the lift lobby, you will have this open area. It's a welcome statement, so it will be very bright here. However, this is only around 1.7 meters in width and 2.5 meters in height. You can see that it's very dark without the lights on. So that's the setback for double loaded corridors. And in between them, you have voids, but at lower levels, right, you don't really get any daylight coming in. Right? And it's separated by this handrail that is also in accordance to their yellow and white color team. And today, this will be the unit that we're going to check out. It's a fully furnished one by the team and Let's go! Anyway, the unit that we're going to check out today will be Type B818 square feet. When you come into the entrance, you have the kitchen and the yard on the side. Then when you go straight in, there's a dining and a living with three bedrooms. So this is a demonstration of three bedroom squeeze within an 818 square feet unit. And the principal bedroom come with their own bathroom and that's one common bathroom being shared. You will have a very small balcony, but what's nice is you still have a yard space. So coming into the space, you have a foyer here. This will be the shoe cabinets area. This will directly be the kitchen space already. And this came with the developer's unit itself. This is a two meter stretch dry kitchen and the color team is really consistent then you have a four burner hot by electrolux hood as well by electrolux and you have a basin and it's built under the solid surface that's nice you have a window here and this will be the yard space where you can put in your washing machine and that's about it lah because it's rather narrow so it means if you want to do heavy cooking here rather challenging also the owner did a grill here because it's rather close to the corridor here so you see then you can have people just walking past but looking into the unit itself so right next to the kitchen this will be the location for the fridge well at least they allocated a king just nice for the fridge then you have the dining and you have the living and I like that how the choice of colors actually ties into the original color scheme of the building then you have this little balcony here. So this purpose of the balcony is just to have that outdoor connection to the views because the view seriously is rather awesome. You can see all landed properties around and that will be the consequences of located right next to the main circulation of PJ itself. So this is only like 500 mm, just nice for a person to stand. So just to try out the sound isolation, Yo, not bad. The width from wall to wall is around 2.9 meters, almost the same with the height that is 2.9 meters as well. So it feels rather compact. And if you look into the property portals, this lease whole unit is going for around 500 each to 600,000, depending on which height level. And this particular unit itself is for rent 2,007 a month. Then from the living space, this will be the corridor into the three bedrooms plus the bathroom, and you will have this beam separating across different spaces. Moving on, this will be the bathroom shared between the guests and the two bedrooms. This scene is by a Colia. WC is also by a Colia. Full height wall tiles, shower screen, and a hot water. I think this is added connected to a window that is connected to the yard space. Then the width of this corridor is around 1.1 meters. Not too bad. Going into the smaller bedroom first, this will be the first room that is connected to the internal void so it's going to depend a lot on artificial lighting but if it's just for sleeping right i think it's fine so the dimension is 2.6 meters by 3.1 meters uh it's sufficient just that it looks way smaller because of the lack of natural lighting like you can still put in a queen size bed bedside table also a wardrobe just that there will be certain box up around where it's required for the pipings for the aircon this will be the window and it's tinted so you kind of have that privacy element but it's dark moving opposite drastically different this will be the second bedroom and this is where we can see clearly the difference between natural daylighting and the one without last but not least this will be the principal bedroom so the distance between wall to wall is also around 2.9 and before this unit we checked out an original developer unit that is bare the space actually looks pretty small 
and after adding the finishes, it looks way larger and that's something that a lot of new investors need to understand. A furnished space looks way bigger than an empty space. And after putting in the queen size bed, bedside tables with the wardrobe, right, you still have some space to add on a dressing table if you want to squeeze in. If not, it will be a very nice circulation space. You have timber floorings that matches with the timber skirtings. And for the window frames, they actually stick to their color scheme that is white in color. Here also enjoy the PJO town view. And something to point out also, you look into the buildings opposite, right? That just shows how aged this township is. And the best part about old addresses, the food. <laughs> then moving into the principal bathroom, similar treatments, you will have Aqualia for basin and WC. Then you will have this solid surface along with a full height wall house, shower screen. The owner added the water heater along with this tinted and frosted window panel. And I think that's all for the unit itself. I think the selling point to this project is also that direct connection over to Jaya One. Let's go check that out. This will be the experience walking into Jaya One itself. Solid though, it's so near. And just like that, we are connected over to Jaya One already. And just in case for those who require that, there's a mechanical system for wheelchairs. Uh. And coming out directly from the back alley, then this will be the main spot that you are land into. Uh. So you are right opposite these restaurants, bakeries and getting your caffeine fix like Starbucks or Coffee Bean or some cafes here is just in abundance even during the evening you need to have a couple of drinks is also available here and it's way better if the office is located within this block itself walking distance over then you have your food crave settle, commercial settle, work settle huh. you only drive out for durians maybe <laughs> because SS2 is so near okay and I guess that's all for this episode. It's now time for Sean Take 3 on 3. So the first thing I like about the project will be the utilization of costs. If you think about it, like this site has the benefit of being large. Therefore, they get to separate out the car park structure along with the residential structure. And by doing so, they get to save up the money of doing the transfer in terms of structural elements and they allocate it on the facility deck. And because the car park area is so big, the facilities area on top of the car park structure is then big as well. And in contrary to the facade from the front, if you look at it, a lot of people say it somewhat looks like a normal apartment or what's so fancy about it. Until they step into the facilities deck, then they will understand what's so amazing about it, where you have the different concepts going around. It's a very different feeling altogether when you walk into the residential tower, then when you move into the facility deck, then suddenly, Ah, that's where all the budgets are focused on. Because if you go into the residential tower, it's rather direct. Like everything is simple, direct, nothing fancy, unit, nothing fancy, 800 square feet, three bedroom, ta-da, finish. But then on the facilities deck, everything is so elaborated, which is point number two as well. Because of the facilities deck being so big in the area, it can accommodate two different types of architectural language and concept. But you have one side, the Turkish architecture with the Japanese architecture all merged together. It gives a very different feel and it's not boring. It's way beyond expectation because you don't really know what to expect next on the next area. Personally, I really enjoyed the facility deck. Of course, it's a little bit more kids friendly, a little bit more family oriented. And the empty piece of land that is just covered in turfs, many may think that it's just a waste of space, but to a parent, or for one year old, they need that kind of space just to run around. Above that, there will be the difference in platform level, where it allows a different dimension of experience. Some you will experience a space in a sunken level, some will be on a normal level, then another one will be in another elevated level. So you get this dynamic range to really enjoy and experience the whole facilities there. And match that with a very, very dense landscape, right? It's so nice. Really, it's very, very nice. Next will be the connectivity to the neighboring amenities. Like you can see, it's just a very matured location to begin with. One, you have access to, and this Jalan University is in between several main highways. You have LDP connecting to Spring, connecting to Federal, connecting to MPE on the other end. You can reach Oakland Road from there. 
and on the pathway there you have two hospitals University Hospital, Columbia Hospital, numerous commercial centers and not only by drive, by walking distance you are physically connected to Jaya One and it's just a bonus if your office is just there, right? Whoa. Unfortunately for that well-connected, established address that attracts a lot of people to this location, therefore congestion happens. On top of your usual weekday peak hour traffic, right? Weekends is also pretty packed around this area because of the lifestyle components in abundance within this area. Just by local cuisine itself, the Indian rice here, chicken rice here, nyonya food here, Thai food here, hidden bars around everything is within this location itself and that is always the charm of PJ and you only have this street as the main connection right you'll always be stuck in traffic besides that being right next to the main road also comes with noise pollution so if you are the units facing the roadside then you can really feel the noise from the traffic like every day la. so I don't really think that the balcony is somewhere you can really enjoy serenity visually maybe when you open a window right wow then the second thing i don't like will be the initial impression from the roadside so when you come from jalan you see you look at it right it looks just like a normal apartment nothing fancy at all and some call it like a low cost for such kind of thing which i disagree at all right but when i come into the space itself all the architectural treatments especially the facilities there it changed the perception but when you go back to the unit then it's like meh especially when you go into the empty unit like. if the one without any furnishing right it feels rather small for an 818 square feet on the same point also the corridors are rather tight and rather dark because it's pretty obvious that the residential tower is an exercise to maximize cost they really max out the efficiency but at least they put back in the facility stack lah. well at least lah, right and last of all will be the choices in abundance within this location you have air waters that's coming out right now right so once that's completed then you will have somewhat a combination of tenants you also have a combination right next at Jaya One you have a PJ itself walking distance you have a few easily like three to five thousand if you drive around it's easily ten thousand units around but it's because of the job opportunities available within this location hence I still think that it's sustainable but just something to take note where you make sure that your unit stands out lah. and with that do I like the project Yes, it exceeded my initial expectation when I was driving in. I didn't expect the facilities to be that awesome. But from a developer standpoint, I appreciate where you squeeze budget in one place, save all the money and dump it somewhere else where people can really fully enjoy. If you really like this episode, like it, share it and even subscribe for more episodes like this. Until next time, this is Sean Dan. Ciao.